So for me, I had struggled with depression for so long. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, crippling depression. Can you imagine he had every room tape and bug, and they found little bugs and little tape recorders? I mean, little, 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 those micro, uh, they're 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 good friends who. Bilal told me. <laughs> Jaden. He told me that you knew Will was in your child. Yes, he did. Wonder why he left that out of his Tasha K interview. Yeah. yeah like, in that interview, he, he said a lot. He said a lot. He said everything but the thing that was important. That he know that Will Smith, Jaden, he ran these mills, and you know it, Bilal. Now I'm getting no how far in the desert you run. You'll go from a Philly to a sand, but they'll still get you. He's Philly, though, Jay. It's Philly. You know, he meek milk. As far as I'm concerned, he meek milk. I ain't calling him milk no more. That's milk. That's meek milk. Add it to the honeycomb. You got a you got a meal. So you believe the Dwayne Martin story that that could have? Of course, happened. everybody know that. Shit. Everybody knew they was just ain't nobody know Dwayne was folding him over like that, taking him to Panatown. And all these black is running around marrying these, sitting there convincing other women to go chase a fat. Go get you. Look at my it isn't he? Can you imagine if he told the truth? You stand on red carpets with this and you sell an image of lies. Then you influence the public and ask the public to covet and want your life. Who wants? Who wants that? Who jealous of that? Bunch of whack too afraid to find a real man in real love. So you marry a get for a Birkin bag and then turn your head while he a bunch of kids. I don't feel sorry for none of you. Don't y'all sit around writing your books, telling your sob stories. Jaguar is not the only one to have raised Will Smith's and Diddy's connections prior to Keith D saying something startling a couple years long ago. Yeah, it was Jaden Pickett. What? You saying that, you saying the whole party was weird. What did you see at the party that made it weird? I mean, I'm confused. I guess it was Illuminati. It's just weird. I know I wouldn't want to be part of like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm from the old school, dude, and uh, that shit wasn't really tolerated with my generation, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, hate crime, yes, but it's more tolerated these days and nothing like that. It's more, you know what I'm saying, more open now, you know what I'm saying? But back then it was kind of fishy, you know what I'm saying? Still kind of fishy, you know, but it's more, you know, out there now. The incident y'all had with Warren G and Kid Frost, tell me about that, my man. Okay, Kid Frost had gave a, a party at the House of Blues. One of our big homeboys wanted to go with us. You know what I'm saying? So he went with us and we, he said, Ooh, you got a fun. So one of uh, Kid Frost's homies still on my big homie. Will Smith isn't going to be happy with this, as Diddy was just the target of a raid. He maintained tapes of everything if the GAN deal is to be believed. He'll be one of the first dudes that they probably pull to the side and say, yo, well, you say that your man, I heard you on TMZ say that he never did this and he never did that, but um, ain't this you? If those pictures or those films or anything like that exists, you know what I'm saying? That's what they, they pay those agents to do. So, of course, I don't believe that none of the people who 
or his celebrity friends is going to speak or say nothing until they're either contacted or they know what they really got. So you feel like they might be worried that they might be on tape at one of Diddy parties doing something they wasn't supposed to be doing? The Rob said in his affidavit that Diddy had every room taped and bugged. Diddy had, yo, huh, can you imagine he had every room taped and bugged and they found little bugs and little tape recorders? I mean, little, little, little those micro, um, projectors or whatever like that, or video cameras, they found them in the house, bro. So by them having those things in the house and people know there's drugs, there's alcohol, there's loose women, there's loose men, woman on woman, man on man, all kind of crazy sh bruh. They just wondering who or when they're gonna let this stuff be known. But not only celebrities, not only celebrities, I don't think it's only celebrities gonna be shook. He had politicians in there. He had princes in there. He also had a couple of preachers in there. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> That's crazy. You personally, you think they got tapes? Well, my personal opinion that if Lil Rob could be trusted and his statements are true, they got them. They got tapes and stuff. It makes sense that Jaden was negatively impacted by everything. Just have a look at all the difficulties he faced as a child. I love Justin Bieber, that's just a fact. Well, talk about brotherly love. You couldn't miss this moment on your feeds. Justin Bieber giving pal Jaden Smith a kiss on the cheek at Coachella. having a good time. The now viral video shows Jaden sneaking up from behind the beads, grabbing his waist for a little dance, and then there's this, Justin sweetly giving his bro a kiss, something that's become the talk of the internet. He's really just like a brother to me. Yeah, these two go way back. Guess who? Jay Smith and JB. Uh-huh. I got you, little bro. That's 16-year-old Justin and 11-year-old Jaden when they collaborated on the pop star's 2010 song, Never Say Never. I think that it's cool to just collaborate with people who you know. Which was also the theme song for Jaden's film, The Karate Kid. I've gotten to a place where I have like a core group and people who are really supporting me and encouraging me. And, uh, I never had that before. You know, I never had, I never created those type of relationships. So now it feels like I have so much. I honestly just love him and like what he's doing, like and the amount of change he's been able to make in the world is just insane. Life is hard, you know, we all go through things, you know what I'm saying? But the difference between other people is that no one knows about it. You know what I'm saying? And it's really difficult for people like Justin, for me, for all types of people in the limelight. Justin and Jaden clearly unapologetic about the bond they've created over the years. On Thailand's The Woody Show, and during the interview, Papa Smith planted a wet one right on Jaden's lips. When we said we wanted to bring him to the table, I was like, well, what do you want to talk about? He said, mushrooms. Yeah, yeah. The magic kind, of course. Yeah. Jaden Smith joins his mom, Jada Pinkett Smith, and grandma, Adrian Banfeld Norris, on Red Table Talk. And they're talking magic mushrooms, people. But since it's my mom, it's like, you know, it's my mom, we're working together. On the latest episode of the Facebook Watch series, the fam talks about the plant medicine that some say is a miracle treatment for mental health. I was introduced to plant medicine 10 years ago mm -hmm. to deal with my depression, yeah. and it knocked it out. Something Jada says she can speak to from personal experience. What it does, unlike just going to therapy and putting people on Prozac, 
right? Yeah. Which I did that too. Which um, that is not successful for so many not. people. And that's the thing. So for me, I had struggled with depression for so long. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, crippling depression. So the thing about the plant medicine is that not only does it help you feel better, but it, it helps you solve the problems of how you got there in the first place. As for Jaden, he says recent studies that toted mushrooms as one of the most significant advances in treating depression over more traditional antidepressants inspired his use of psychedelics. Jaden Smith has been well known since he was a young child. He co-starred with his well-known father, Will Smith Smith, in the feature film, The Pursuit of Happiness when he was just seven years old. Smith subsequently went for his own career, dabbling in acting, singing, and fashion. Most notably, he made appearances in the 2010 Karate Kid movie and the brief TV show, The Get Down. Smith acknowledges that he never experienced a typical upbringing, in contrast to how his sister Willow Smith has talked about her own struggles. In fact, at the age of 15, Jaden Smith decided he had had enough of his opulent lifestyle and shocked his parents by asking for freedom. Smith, who was then 15 years old, was granted permission by Jada to become an independent man but he chose not to submit the necessary paperwork since he felt that living under his parents' roof was both great and free. Meanwhile, Rodney Jones's former producer and cinematographer accused Diddy of sexual assault and filed a federal complaint against the mogul, alleging that Com SE intimidated him. This is one of Diddy's notable traits. But I want to go back to this lawsuit, right, by Cassie. She claims that, you know, she hid out at a friend house in Florida after, you know, Diddy put hands on her. And she said that she was tracked down by a guy named James Cruz, the president of Bad Boy Management. You know anything about that? James Cruz and Hard Pierre always been Diddy's flunkies, especially Hard Pierre. That's why he's being sued right now, too, by one of his assistants and stuff like that, because I guess he learned from his boss. But James Cruz used to work for 50. But he worked for Diddy first. So the niggas was always scum buckets, man. Right, right. But speaking of Harvey Pierre, how do you feel about him getting accused of sexual assault? Uh, like I said, anything that has to do with those sexual assaults, those people have to prove that. But is it, are they capable? Yeah, they're capable. Look at the atmosphere. They in the music industry, they in the music business. They set up those type of, uh, uh, they, they learn the tricks of the trade, for instance. Guys don't put those pills that they get to the girls in the champagne bottles because they popping them in front of them. Most of those girls, especially if they like mixed drinks, you understand? They see the bottles when they open them and they trying to keep their eyes on because they don't want to get no kind of drugs put in their system. But what they don't understand is in the orange juice and it's in the cranberry juice. They didn't put the pills and the stuff in there, the roofies, the ex eat all whatever they they put it in the juice. Now, those girls who like the mixed drinks, you understand what I'm saying? They gonna pour their own back because they don't understand it ain't in the bottles, it's in the juice. Those guys, they learn that and they put it to those girls who don't know no better. The lawsuit alleges criminal activities. Additionally, the complaint claims that Jones's cameraman obtained hundreds of hours of video and audio recordings of Mr. Holmes, his employees, and his guests indulging in significant illegal activity. Sexual assault and the solicitation of sex workers to provide lace beverages to minors are examples of such behavior. The lawsuit also names Cuba Gooding Jr. as a significant offender. Right, right, I got you. But looking at this lawsuit, right, you know, Little Rod, he alleges that, you know, Diddy, he'll put his hands on him. But, you know, when he'll put his hands on him, he'll disguise it as horseplay. But he felt like Diddy was trying to groom him, in a sense. Well, 
with the harsh play situation, I used to see him do that with certain women. You understand? Uh, when he was mad, upset, or, or he he was too old for this, shit, but he would do that play fighting shit. You understand? So I can imagine him play fighting with Lil Ra. Cause you know, a lot of people can say what they want to say about Diddy. You know, he got a knuckle game. He will fight you. You know what I'm saying? You his size, you understand something like that? Around your size, something like that, he would fight you. He had a knuckle game. He was he wasn't that dude that like people try to say he was some old scared ass nick. Nah, he would fight you. You understand? So I could see with a person like Lil Rod, he probably was roughing them up, grabbing them, groping them, you know what I'm saying? Acting like he playing with them, but he actually want him to do what he want him to do. So, like I said before, that shit he did in the past. So when I read it from Lil Ra, I see he's doing the same shit he doing in the future. He used to play fight with the pillows, like the pillow fight, that dumb shit like that. You know, that's kid shit to me. But if that's the way they do, that's the way they do. You understand? He used to do it with Kim all the time. So the horse play was his way of grooming you in a sense. Well, I don't, that grooming, that's some new shit. You know what I'm saying? We didn't call that, <laughs> we didn't call it grooming back then. That his horse play was a way of letting you know I could really hurt you if I wanted to. You get it? I could really hurt you. And that's what that kid probably felt. Yo, why he doing me like that? Oh, he just playing with you. No, he was letting you know, if I turn this up, I could really hurt you. And that was his way of trying to get you to be submissive to him. Right. He's letting you know, he's putting it in your mind. Listen here, bro. He's trying to put in his mind, we're playing now, but if I really want to turn this stuff on you, it's on. You ain't got no wins. So that kid is feeling, yo, listen here. In his mind, if you read the documents, in his mind, he was so scared that when he went to other people in the camp and said, why did he treat me? Why did he doing this and doing that? They said, oh, he just playing with you because he love you. He like you. He, he was, no, he was trying to put that, instill that fear in you that he had in you. Also, you know, a legend that he met Cuban Gooding Jr. through Diddy on Diddy Yacht. And it even got to a point where he started touching him on his, you know, upper inner thigh near his groin, according to him. Did you see the picture? Nah, I didn't get to see it, but... Um... Oh, my God. Coop, yo, listen to me, man. I don't know if it was what they call it when you take two pictures and they put it together and stuff like that. They, they, what they, what they call it when the, they put the pictures together and it don't belong together, but they put it together, whatever. Side by side. Yeah, whatever they call that sh Cuban, Cuban, uh, 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 Cuban Gooden Jr. was so close to that man. I would thought that was his lady. That's how close he was to him. And then his hands all on his leg and everything. It, it was, it, it was crazy, bro. I, I, I don't even believe that. So when you see Cuban Gooden fighting a case here in New York, when he says the girl was saying that he was groping her and everything like that, I'm glad they didn't show that picture at his trial. <laughs> Cause he would have been guilty. That's how close he was to that kid, man. So you seeing no pictures, do you believe his claims? Yeah, I believe his claims. If somebody put something in Cuban Gooden Jr. ear that this was fresh meat, or see, can you break him, or see, can you do something? In April, a woman filed a separate complaint against Christian Kong, the music mogul's son, alleging that the 26-year-old was aboard a yacht at the music mogul charter in December 2022. Kong's is also named as a defendant in the lawsuit. Thanks for watching, everyone. Grace Omar accused the rapper of helping and abetting her son, saying that he is responsible as the yacht's charterer. That's it for the video.